Hi besties, thanks for joining me today for a watercolor tutorial. We're going to be doing a cute little cake. It's a unicorn cake and this is the end result, but we're going to be doing it in a larger style. This is just a step-by-step. -step. You can get that at TammyOnCreative.com. You can also get the sketch, um, a larger sketch that's about the size of this paper. You can see that here. I'm gonna go through this step-by-step. -step. It's right here. So first off, we're going to add in one layer of this beautiful Indian Throne Blue. Then let everything dry. Next up we add quinacridone rose and we do the cheeks, the banner, and the ears. And then we use the violet for the horn. We're gonna let everything dry. Then we're gonna do the base here in quinacridone lilac. We're gonna add in a little tongue. We're gonna add in some highlights, some lines. And then at the end here we're gonna do some additional black we're gonna do accents on top for the, the little cheeks, the mouth, the horn, the ears, and all that. So let's talk some art supplies. You'll need a small and a medium brush. Both need to be fine tip rounds. You also need a 140 pound 300G watercolor paper. I use the Canson XL, it's really inexpensive. You also need a technical pen, a fine tip one, black, waterproof. A, opaque white pen. I use the Uniball UM153 Signo Broadpoint gel pen, but if you have any white pen that goes over watercolor, do use that. You also need a glass of water, a mixing palette, a pencil, a paper towel, and an eraser. Those are just your normal items for any watercolor project. For this project, for the watercolors, I used my White Knights St. Petersburg watercolor paint set. I used violet, intern throne blue, quinacridone lilac, and the quinacridone rose magenta. Please get all of those colors onto your palette. We'll be using them all fairly quickly here. Also trace that image of the cake onto your watercolor paper. You can use a light box, a window, or some transfer paper. Once you're ready to paint, move on to the next section. So I'm mixing up that Indian Throne Blue. I'm checking to make sure it's not too dark. I want this to be fun and not too dark. Light and airy for this piece. So I'm going in here and I'm doing everything that's part of the cake base except for the cheeks. Doing it darker on the outsides because this is a round cake. So I'm being careful as I go around the edges of the cheeks. And I'm using a medium brush right now. Adding lots of water, because we got lots of space here. Getting into those little corners. Just cover everything up here, except for those cheeks. Once you're done with this section, we're gonna let everything dry, and then we're going to do the cheeks, the banner, and all the other little stuff on top. You can't let layers touch each other in watercolor unless you want them to blend. And in this case, we don't want the cheeks to blend into the cake section. We want that harsher edge. Feel free to speed up the video, slow it down, and rewind. You want to do this piece at your own pace. Once we're done here, I'm going to get a snack and a drink and let this whole thing dry. It's a very pretty color. And depending on how much water you use, it can really look different. It can look a lot darker. But we're going in with lots of water and keeping it light and bright.
I've got quite a bit of water in the corners, so I'm gonna move that around so this can evenly dry. If you feel like you got too much water in the corners, you can also use a little bit of a paper towel and just touch the corner to it and that water will come right up. So that's a little tip. Just use a paper towel to help bring water up off the paper. You can also move it around just a little bit, see how much seeps in, and then you can decide if you need that paper towel or not. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna get my snack, like I said. Just, just getting these little pieces up here, making it blend just a little bit more so it's darker there on the outside. So please pause your video now and then come on back for the next step after everything is dry on yours. You can use a hair dryer, but make sure your water isn't too wet, that it's not like in pools, so when you hit it with that water, it doesn't go all flying. You want it to be dry enough that the hair dryer just helps you. It doesn't blow your piece to smithereens. Okay, I'm back. Mine's all dry. You can see it looks really pretty. It's darker on the outside and it's got lots of texture. For the next section, we're gonna use that technical pen. It needs to be a waterproof one. So I use that Faber-Castell pit pen. I'm just going over the lines for the mouth. We're also gonna do the eyebrows and the outside of the ear lines. So giving it little eyelashes. It's a really happy unicorn. Maybe even a unikitty. Okay, we're also gonna do the base here. So we're just outlining it just right down there at the base. Trying to get the line straight here can be really hard because of the angle I'm working at. Normally I would just move my paper, but I have it taped down so I can keep it in the same place for all ya. Okay, let's move on to the ears. We're just gonna do the outsides. And then we're gonna move on to doing just the little lines leading up to the banner. Next, we're gonna get out our small paintbrush and we're going to mix up some of that rose. So I'm adding some quinacridone rose magenta to the banner section. I had a little oopsie there. I got the wrong color and I'm just fixing that. Sometimes it can be hard to know what colors you are because down on paper they will look different than they do in the palette pieces. So I accidentally picked up the wrong color to begin this. It's no problem. These are all pretty darker colors and they all look really good together. They blend well. 
So I'm just going along the little squiggly parts of the banner, making sure I stay in the lines. I'm just loving this color palette. I love these pinks, purples, and blues. If these were the only colors I got to use, I'd be really happy. So once we're done with the banner, we're gonna do the ears, the cheeks, and the plate top. I'm going in for the ears. And we're using that small brush so we can really get in there. And the ears have some curves giving it extra personality. Once you're done with these sections, we'll need everything to dry again. Because we'll want to move on to the base which touches the top of the plate base. Let's just do these little cute, happy cheeks. I'm going in slow, trying to keep it looking nice and round. And then filling everything in. If you have too much water on your brush or on the paper, you can use a paper towel to dot everything. So I'm a little juicy here. So I'm gonna get this paper towel. I'm just gonna put down some of that water. I'm gonna pull up some additional water that's on the paper and then complete the cheek. Next up, we'll do that little area right below the cake. It has the little lines on it. We're gonna be using the same color and tracing that little section on each edge. It's round and then doing a very straight line underneath the cake. Take your time and do the lines as best you can. It takes practice. It's even a little bit harder here on film because I can't move my paper. <laughs> I normally like turn it to the side. I paint and write with everything at an angle. It's just how it's always been.
Okay, clean off your brush. We're gonna go into the violet to do the horn. I'm tracing out the horn and then doing the full in color. I want a nice crisp line. So I'm using that fine tip right down to the edge and then we're filling it all in. Once you've got a defined line, it's easier to follow it. Okay, clean off your brush. We're gonna let everything dry here before we come in and do some accents and do the base there. So it's time for some tea and a snack for me. That's dry time. So please pause the video here until your piece is dry. Mine is all dry and I'm ready to move on with the next parts. I'm gonna use my black technical pen to do the little lines here. I'm trying to find them. The paint's a little dark to be able to, so I'm just going with my gut, trying to keep them about the same size. I'm gonna mix a bit of that quinacridone rose magenta and the quinacridone lilac together. And we're gonna do the base here. You want a good amount of water and I'm using the bigger brush because this is a larger area. So I'm just going down the outside here and then filling it all in. Trying to stay straight along the upper edge there.
we're filling the full base in so it's like a berry color. Sort of that reddish purple grape color. Looks nice and juicy. Okay, that's perfect. We want that to dry, and while that's drying, we're gonna get out our white gel pen. We're gonna do some accents up top while this dries. So clean your brush off so it's ready for later. So let's do that cute little tongue and the cheeks. A little space here. So I'm gonna fill the full tongue in. And I am going over top the little black line. Sometimes it can take a little bit of movement to get the paint flowing on this pen, but I do really love it. I used to use some white acrylic pens and they weren't working too well for me on top of the watercolor paper. So I found this alternative gel pen that I am liking. It works really well for like smaller areas, but for the larger areas, I use a white gouache. This tongue area is turning out to be one of those areas where I'm gonna come in with some of that white gouache. It's just a opaque white watercolor. That's what gouache really is. So I just get a little bit on my my brush here, and I'm gonna go over the tongue. I always keep a tube of gouache on hand. It's really good for highlights, but the pen comes in handy when I just wanna do some smaller stuff. We'll still be using the pen here for the majority of the little highlights. The unicorn's expression is really coming together. She's so happy, so excited to be at the party. Now I'm heading into the cheeks, just going around each one and highlighting that. I'm also going to give her three little dots in each cheek. I try to go for threes and fives. Keeping things odd makes things look better. The symmetry is just really good. So I'm trying to add in quite a bit of white. It's taking a little bit of time with this pen today. Each art tool has its good things and its bad things. So I'm adding in those little dots. Just gives her that extra bit of cute. Now we're gonna write the word party up here. Feel free to write in your own word. I'm trying to keep it pretty even so the party goes all the way across, but it's all even so it centers. It's a party. The 
base there is almost dry, I think. Just gonna add in some little gel highlights here. I'm gonna add in some little highlights here down on the base. the lights hitting that and it's got these little protrusions. You got one there on each side. So you can see the sides of the two and face on for the center one. And the fourth one is on the other side so you won't see it. Because I used that gouache that tongue is still wet, so I'm gonna let this all dry, and then I'm coming in with the black technical pen, because we're gonna do a little line on the mouth there and do some other little things, give her some sprinkles. Yeah, it's too wet. So let's let this all dry, and then resume the video for the last bit. Okay, mine is all dry. Her tongue is ready to get that little line on it. So I've got the Faber-Castell pit pen here. I'm using the small, and I'm just doing a little line here and there, and then she's getting those sprinkles. Her little nose. We're doing her horn, goes in and at an angle, so it looks like it's turning. They're like little S's. So I can't see all my sprinkles anymore, so I'm just gonna do them as I feel fit. You can do your own, you can do circles, you can do sprinkles, do it as you want. You can do a collaboration. I'm just giving you a way to go forward. would be really cute as party invitations. So I'm gonna fill mine in so they're gonna be little black sprinkles.
To finish the unicorn off, I'm gonna give her three little dots on each side on top of her cheekbone area. Thanks for joining me for this video. Please give me a thumbs up, a like, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about what you want to see me do. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.